Hi all. Our major theme today is the idea of undermining the C3 square. So Nigel Short was playing white and Jonathan Spillman was playing black. The year was 1988. Short playing white, he played e4 and Spillman played d6 and after d4, g6. So we have here a kind of perk defence. Uh, after knight c3, bishop g7, Short played the ultra aggressive f4, which is the Austrian attack. After knight f6, knight f3, castles, bishop e2. Now we start to sense one of the positional plans in the game, which is the undermining of the c3 square. Black plays c5, so a temporary pawn sacrifice. White takes it, and black plays now queen a5. So because of the threat of knight takes e4, with, with that knight being pinned, and queen takes c5, white's giving back that c5 pawn. And in doing so, black has now, after the check, and king h1, c-file pressure. And c3 is the first target on the c-file. So it's quite a logical plan now to base the strategy on undermining that c3 square, which happens to be a knight on it. So how does Spillman do this? He plays first knight c6, and after bishop d3, Short's intention with this might be a queeny one, bishop e3 to evict the queen, and then queen h4. So it looks as though you know, this is going to be played very aggressively by Short. Spillman, though, carries on his dark square positional strategy. He plays bishop g4, so he doesn't mind losing this bishop. And in terms of the major theme for the game, by removing that c8 bishop, on f3, as well as strengthening the dark squares, he can also place a rook there on c8 and intensify that pressure on the c-file. So this is all relevant for the c3 undermining strategy. To queen e1, he takes on f3. Rook takes f3. And now, instead of playing the routine rook c8, he actually plays knight b4. So after bishop e3, knight takes d3, c takes d3. First, Spillman's plan is to undermine c3, though, and later he'll try and work on these weaknesses to try and make them weaker. So it's all about softening up the white position. Rook b1, and to pursue the undermining plan, now a5 is play played. So a4 and a3 will help this undermining of this c3 knight. And potentially, black is also threatening things like knight g4, unleashing this bishop on c3. So, short here plays f5, and after rook a c8, we see, we see the pressure is now um, building up. Bishop g1 was played, and now a4. So short tries to put a stop to this undermining plan. He plays a3, but that's not the end of it. The, the black queen goes to b3. It doesn't mind being parked there, or potential exposed um, discovered attacks with this rook on f3. It's just not going to happen from this position that easily. And from b3, black can now um, carry on the attack with b5 and b4, as the game will show. So bishop d4 was played here, provoking black, potentially, to play for e5, but Spielman never did. He did actually, though, play e6, as though he might be playing e5 later. But actually, it has other intentions. If f takes e, then f takes e, and f6 is adequately protected. Short plays queen g1 here to make sure this bishop isn't a tactical liability. It's protecting the bishop and also it's now preparing g4 and g5. So b5 was played. So Spielman carries on his counterplay on the queen side, trying to undermine the c3 square. So this mechanism used will be another temporary pawn sacrifice with b4 to get in a3. So b4 followed by a3 after a takes b, undermining the c3 knight. So white's fairly uncomfortable on because of this c file pressure. After g4, Spillman now plays an amazing knight sacrifice. He plays knight takes g4. He plays f6. So has Spillman blundered? He actually plays knight takes f6. So with this knight sacrifice, he's created a kind of vacuum around the white king. And he's free now to pursue his luxury undermining of the c3 knight. So bishop takes f6, bishop takes, rook takes. A simplified position, and he simply carries on undermining the c3 square with b4. After a takes b4, a3. So queen d1, queen takes b4, rook f2. Short prepares to collect black's a pawn. So a takes b, knight a2. 
and now this ball is going to drop off. So it looks as though here, black's simply a piece down. After queen d4, though, Rupika thinks this is a difficult position to play. It gives a 0.27 advantage to white. After rook takes b2, Spillman played d5 now. Again, another logical undermining strategy. Following on from the undermining of c3, he's now undermining white's little pawn island. So look at black's pawn structure. It's brilliant. These nice connected solid pawns, and white potentially will be left with two isolated pawns after this d5 is played. So rook b4, queen a7, and now knight c1 was played. Maybe much better would be queen e2, according to Ripka, to at least defend against this queen e3 invasion. But knight c1 was played, and now white's position dramatically goes downhill, even though he's a piece up. Spillman first undermines that, that e4 pawn, so there's now two isolated pawns. And also, there's a lot of air in white's position here. Queen e3, and it's very, very difficult to play. Short played queen g1, and now, according to Ribka, after this move, which must be a blunder, Ribka gives, for example, knight d3, but only equal. But anyway, short played queen g1, and black is actually clearly better, according to Ribka, after this, with the move queen f3 check. It's amazing to think a piece down to be clearly better, but because of the exact position on the board, after queen g2, check now on d1, queen g1, and rook fd8. What can white do here to exploit the piece up? Very, very little. Black is actually winning this position. In this position, very, very difficult to play. Um, short actually, after rook fd8, played knight b3. And this allowed check, queen g2, and now rook d1, exchanging rooks. And then the queen simply coming back to e2. Now let's look at this position. If queen g2 here, then queen e1 check, and it picks up the rook. Isn't that a bit unfortunate? Queen g1, queen takes b4. So white has very little moves here. I mean, this is actually busted for white. Short played h3, and after rook c2, he had had enough. He resigned. He didn't even play out his last two checks. Let's see if he had. Rook b8, king g7, queen d4. Black simply has king h6. And what does white do now? He's, he's threatened with queen g2, mate. Queen h2, mate. It's just, it's just not being able to defend this. For example, queen g1, queen takes e4 is mating. So that was a pretty dramatic finish. You know, Spillman apparently was just a piece down, and, but the compensation proved to be huge. Let's have a look in overview and summary of this game. So Spielman showed that a simple undermining strategy of the c3 square, followed later by an undermining of White's um, little pawn island, proved to be huge compensation for even being a piece down. So he started his undermining strategy, which is this a5 move. So a4 and a3 being the principal plan. And Short seemingly was getting the best of both worlds, uh, carrying on his attack on White's king but first playing a3 to simply blockade black's a pawn. So he must have been thinking, you know, where is uh, Spillman's counterplay? So Spillman really, you know, maximized the use of the c file pressure and the undermining plan of c3 by playing now b5 with the idea of b4 and then later a3. And here, but Spillman ingeniously sacrificed his knight for two pawns with knight takes g4. So this let his king... Um, be alive for much longer and all he is is a piece down because white can't easily re-coordinate now to deliver a mating attack there's no form pawn on f6 so it's not very easy to get a mating net now and this also gives time now to Spielman to carry on his positional plan so he plays b4 and then a3 and the fruit of this positional plan is basically you know white's pawn structure becomes a wreck it becomes basically two isolated pawns, the way Spillman played it. He first played queen d4, and then he follows up with d5. So there's going to be another isolated pawn, whilst black's pawn structure remains compact and connected. And the rooks of black are just lethal in this position, because of this vacuum around the white king. So the compensation here is starting to grow after d takes, d takes. Very, very difficult to play from white, especially because short allowed queen e3. So this e-pawn's a continual problem. 
And these two files are continual problems for white as well, with rooks potentially coordinating with that queen to deliver mating threats. So queen g1, queen check, and now all of a sudden black is actually better. So short had already misplayed it totally. So a piece up, but a completely lost position here after rook fd8. Short plays knight b3. There aren't any better moves, apparently. Queen f3. Rooks came off. And now this queen on the 7th rank to be supported with the rook on the 7th rank. And white's extra knight is worth nothing here. What is significant are these two weaknesses and the huge vacuum around the king. It's really indefendable. So h3, rook c2, and short had had enough. He resigned. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.